Hmm, hello and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. And let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We're on our, oh, I can't even remember, I think our fifth tutorial now. So if you haven't seen any of the other tutorials, go check them out where we introduce what Zim is. It's a JavaScript Canvas framework to code creativity. It's powered by CreateJS and Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS. So that's how all of this stuff works. So there's lots of components and conveniences and controls and fun things that you can use from Zim right in Adobe Animate. There's lots of examples of what can be made in Zim. So have a look there. There's a learn section that will help you. And we're in a sense mirroring somewhat to somewhat the Zim basics, but you'll find more information in the Zim Basics video series. So you might want to look there. We're just trying to entice you a little bit to show you what kind of things can benefit you in Adobe Animate if you bring in some Zim code. All right, there's all sorts of video tutorials, code pen tutorials, etc. Let's try today though, um, in those earlier videos as well, it shows how to bring in right here, the Zim Shim. We usually just copy the template, start working right in an editor. But if you want to work in Animate to use the animation from Animate or movie clips, etc., and layouts, uh, then hey, that's great. So there's Zim Shim. And if you press this, there's a zip file that you can get uh, that's the general gist of it, a zip file that will give you a template so you can start using Zim right in Animate. Okay, let's go into Animate then, and we will start a new file. Like that, very high, and create. I keep on forgetting I don't have to press that, it just have to hit go. And we've adjusted this slightly to a 60 frame rate and a slightly gray stage, so be it. And we also will bring in our profile. It's missing, so we have to import it. And we do that through this little button right here, import profile. This is all what we set up in the very first uh, tutorial. And we're centering the stage and stuff there. And we're bringing in the Zim Shim that comes from that zip file there. There's the zip file that you would unzip that and bring in the Zim Shim. But we don't have to because we set up a profile for it. Okay, so we're ready to go. Um, here we will bring up an F9, so the, the control or whatever, this is the action script console, and we will call this one Zim 0, uh, 5, did we say it was? And what are we going to do today? How about a tile? Let's tile and emitter and events and events. Well, uh, yeah, whatever. So that's not too tidy, is it? But at least we got the tile there. And we'll copy this. I've learned that if I save this up now and go control enter to run it. No, oh, it did run it. <laughs> Usually it tries to save it. I guess we didn't haven't done any actions yet. So we have to do some actions first. How about we make a new tile? There we go. And we'll dot center it. And now we save it up. And since, I don't know, surprise, surprise. As soon as we actually get some code that does something, then we get the opportunity to save it. So we shall do that indeed. Paste. So this is Zim. Well, lowercase may as well not have bothered. Zim underscore zero five underscore and tile. There we go. FLA. Super. So now let's see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's a tile. So that's the default Zim tile. Most of the Zim, most of the Zim classes, if you just make an object from the class, will give you some sort of, if it's a display object, will give you some sort of visual answer. <laughs> so there you go. There are some default buttons, some default circle. Here's a default tile, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you have parameters to be able to, to make that different. So let's have a look at those. The first parameter is what you want to tile. Okay, we can make a circle. That's fine. Or this could be your movie clips in the very first, I think, no, it was the second one. Yeah, the second um, second tutorial, we showed you how to access your movie clips. So you would access the movie clips up above, zimify them, it's called, and then you could tile those movie clips right in here instead of a zim circle. 
So the circle, we will give um, a size of whatever, 50 maybe, and we will make it blue and then comma. Now, so that's what we're tiling. Our first parameter is what we want to tile, then how many columns, and we'll make it five by four. And then the spacing, if we want, so 20 and 20. So 20 pixel spacings and both horizontal and vertical, five columns, four rows, center. And we save that up and control enter, and that gives us a bunch of tiled blue circles. Oh, I just thought of another thing we can look at, these Zim V values. Uh, well, dynamic parameters, we'll leave it out and just see that anyway. Okay, so there we have, we've tiled some blue circles, great. How can we make that interactive? Uh, well, uh, we could just dot drag that, dot drag. And then what will happen is we'll be able to drag anything. A tile is a container. We'll be able to drag anything that we added to that tile. We might want to put a border on that so that we can see what's going on a bit better. That would be right in here of what? How about white? And we'll make it five. Control enter. And that gives us these sort of white borders. But take a look. As we pick something up, it comes on top. That's natural behavior in Zim in a container. Whatever we pick up comes to the top of the container. We talked a bit about that in the movie in the movie clip um, episode. So uh, great. If we wanted to drag the whole tile, then we could drag all. We also talked about that previously before all colon true. And now you can see what we're doing. We're going to an all parameter. There's a parameter called all and drag. It's not the first parameter. So we can't just go true because the very first parameter is um, something like stage. Uh, S, I guess we could put for stage. And so what this will do is it will say, no, nah, now we can't drag that off the stage. Bonk, bonk, bonk. We can't drag that off the stage. So we've set the boundary of the stage. You can set the boundary to any rectangle or to dimensions as well, or to what's called a boundary object. All right, anyway, I won't, I won't bother with that. So that was the first parameter. There's other parameters too. You can throw things, uh, etc. cetera. But um, one of them is all colon true. So all just means, hey, let's drag them all, or default is all colon false. But here's all colon true. Ah, so that's quite different, isn't it? So that gives us some interactivity. Um, however, there's other types of interactivity too. There's when we tap on something, when we change something, when we click, when we mouse down. So all those, uh, we have traditional events. I believe you're starting to use the on method. CreateJS gave us the on method. And the on method isn't chainable like this because the on method returns uh, a value, uh, an ID, so that we can turn the event off. So it's not chainable. For this to be chainable, if we put a drag, drag needs to be on the object. Therefore, center needs to return the object. So all of the Zim chainable methods return the object so that the next chained uh, method is on the object, and we can just keep on going. That's chaining. Zim's got almost full chaining, but we can't chain the on method. However, uh, because the on method is used for events, and the most two, the two most common events that we have is for components is a tap or a, or a click, a tap and a and a change event. And so we've made chainable tap and change methods. But maybe we'll see that in just a bit. Um, but to get back to the on method, it doesn't chain, which means we have to say something like const tile is equal to, that's a lowercase t note. And then later we can say tile dot on, and we'll make it, let's make it a mouse down, mouse down. And the next parameter is what arrow function to call. Um, that arrow function, by the way, can receive an event object like that. And if we have only one parameter there, or only want to collect one parameter, then we can um, just do it like so. That's such a fat arrow. <laughs> These brackets are very fat in here. Uh, I usually code an atom, and I can go AF and just get an automatic arrow function. But anyway, here we are back in the action script panel. Fun to be here. Haven't been here in a while. And there we are collecting the event object on a mouse down. Then we can do something like the event object dot target dot remove from 
or dispose or whichever. So that will remove the whatever the e dot target is what was clicked on. Now this is in a sense kind of like uh, ECMAScript or raw raw JavaScript ECMAScript or whatever is e dot target e dot current target are their names. So we might need a stage dot update too. So that is s dot update. Or if you want, you can here you can say stage as well. But uh, we've just in the recent version of Zim have decided to give you, so put up here, you are given F for frame, uh, S for stage, W for width, the stage width, and H for the stage height. That just makes it a little bit easier. You can also use these lowercase ones as well if you want. Uh, but let's try her out. We refresh here. And now when we press, bump, boop, bump, boop, bump. Okay, so there's interactivity using a mouse down. A click would have worked too. Uh, mouse over, mouse over. And when we run this now, I have only this little bit right here to be able to drag. So I always have to get that. Sometimes I click that thing and it's like, no, and I click that thing last thing. Like, because I keep on adding up all these things. I wish we could just refresh the thing. But anyway, there's the mouse over uh, working on that. By the way, if you have a lot of, like, if you were doing pixel drawing or something like that, like a big tile of pixels, a mouse over is a bit slow because it's actually checking the color of underneath the cursor. Is something there? What's faster is what's called a hit test grid. A hit test grid is a calculation. It knows how many thing, how many columns, how many rows there are. And it just calculates the position of the mouse using a formula, and that's much quicker. So you can do tile drawing better. But that's some, some traditional uh, event stuff going on on the tile. Agreed. I've seen that kind of thing before, and I'm just going to comment that stuff out. What else can we do? How about when we tap on it, we will make an emitter... Uh, explode the whatever we tapped on. So we could do it with probably, I could do it with tap. So tap looks like this, dot tap in here. We usually use tap though on a button. Uh, tap is much like a click, but it's a little bit different. A click, you can actually uh, wait for a long time. First of all, you can hold down and wait, 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 but you can even let the mouse go later and it still counts as a click or let, not later, but off, off the object. I think it still counts as a click. So uh, Zim's tap is, uh, you can put a time limit on it if you want. We've, we've actually made it still a, quite a large time limit, but uh, its motion is not very big. So it's gotta be like a down up without moving the cursor about. And that allows us to tap on things like a list, for instance. Um, here's a list, const list, oh, const, well, we don't need to put it in a const, new list and dot center just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. And we will comment out that section. So this is a Zim list. And if we were to select something, so I just selected it, but if I were dragging this and let go, and that counts as a click, it's really annoying. So that's why we uh, made tap, or one of the reasons why we made tap anyway, plus it's chainable. Uh, I don't know if you caught that, it doesn't really matter too much. So we could do a tap, and when we do a tap, we apply the erg, erg, comment. We apply the function right in it. So shall we try it? So how does that look? E.target.remove from, yeah, that looks all right. So this will happen on tap this time, which is a mouse down and mouse up. Okay, so down, up down up down move up no down move up no down move up you see the difference so now we can tap them to get rid of them but we can still drag them if we had done it on a click here's what happens you still with us comment that one uncomment this one Uncomment. Why well, won't that uncomment? Uncomment. 
Okay, maybe I didn't quite select it all. And if this says click like this, we run her again. Great, the click's working, but watch, I drag. That's still counted as a click. So, yeah. so sometimes that isn't the best for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so anyway, the, the tap could come in handy. All right, however, on mouse down, but a tap is a mouse up. And if you're mouse uh, down, if you're working mobile, if you're doing mobile, all the, all the Zim works on mobile, just great. If you're doing mobile, then you don't usually want to use a tap or a click because it can make it sluggish. If you're interacting with something, it, it has to wait until the finger comes up and people just notice that a little bit. So we usually use mouse down to interact on mobile where it happens as soon as you touch it is probably better. Uh, the reason for click being a down and up on desktop is that it gives people a chance when they've got the mouse to decide against interacting with something. And you can still do that on mobile if you want. It's just on mobile, people are a bit more used to it happening instantly and it depends on you know what you're making. But what, would, what do we want to do? We want to make an emitter show up there. And so let's do that now and get this tutorial over with, huh? So an emitter looks like this. We've got some choices here. We could just say a new emitter. Uh, we should, if we're going to position it at the, at what we've just pressed on, then we should probably make the emitter and position it first before we remove that object. So there's a new emitter and we can dot loc the emitter at the e dot target. Oh, I forgot to show you that when we went through locations of things, you uh, aside from an X and a Y for the location, you can also loc the registration point at something else that has an X and a Y, and then it will locate it there. So isn't that cool? Uh, we're going to run into some problems though. In that uh, it gives us it gives us this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of emitters, huh? So uh, that's one problem is, is it's not just one emitter. It's uh, we made a new emitter each time. So maybe what would be better is if we just make the emitter out here, we put it in a variable, const emitter is equal to the new emitter. And then we will start paused colon true try and start paused. So that creates the emitter and it starts it paused. Then later what we're going to do is emitter.loc at the target and then we'll dot spurt. So spurt says how many times we can spurt for. So say like 10. Do you like? Okay, let's try it. Control enter here and I close some of these other ones. Nothing like having a bunch of emitters running in the background. Sorry, I'll be right there. We go okay so now uh, we press it and it spurts only 10 of those from the same emitter that seems a little bit more efficient i'm not sure if we want different colors though if we're all blue we sort of run into a problem and we might want to spurt a certain colors and there's ways to do that too let's just talk a bit about colors first of all obviously if they're all blue then we can just say to the emitter when we make it uh, the object, I think that's what it's called, is a new circle that is blue. Um, 10 comma blue and comma. All right, so I'll drop this down. I believe that's how it's done with an OBJ. We would look at, if you don't know what that parameter is called, which you probably don't, <laughs> uh, you just look it up in the docs. But let's see if we got it right. Okay, we made we made our circles a little bit small, perhaps, or smaller than they used to be. If we say uh, 30, then we get something like this, which may be a touch more realistic. Okay, if, if that's indeed what we what we wanted to do. Um, colors. Here, is, when we make a tile, there's this thing called Zim V values. And the Zim V values are really, really cool. They're very powerful. And they allow us to say tile something like an array. Can I put an array? No, I can't. Uh, blue, um, green, 
orange, green, orange. So if I pass in an array there, then every time it go, every time the tile goes to make a circle, it's going to pick. Uh, another word for the Zim V values are picks. Uh, so we made a pick class that al uh, allows for dynamic parameters. So uh, then when we tile, we end up something with something like this. Mm, it's a little bit broken. It's a little bit broken. There we go. Now we have random picks of those, which means the blue doesn't quite make sense. We'd have to figure out how to uh, correlate that. But that's one way, and that's different. You might be saying, well, couldn't you just randomly pick from an array? So const colors is equal to, and if we put these colors here, like so, uh, you could figure out how to get something random from array in Zim. We do it this way, const color is equal to pluck and colors. What that will do, isn't that cute? That just gets one of the random items from that array. And then we put it here, color. So you might think, well, why can't we just randomly pick from the colors? Well, the answer is this reason. Now they're green. I refresh here. They're orange, refresh, they're blue, refresh, they're blue, refresh, they're orange, refresh, they're blue. Okay, so do you see the problem? If we pick the random color ahead of time and pass it into the tile, then the tile always picks that, that same random color. That's not what we want. What we really want to do is pass the array right into their colors. Um, so that's a Zim V value. We're passing in the colors, and if Zim sees an array, it picks randomly from it. Well, what if we don't want to pick randomly? What if we wanted to go blue, green, orange, blue, green, orange, etc.? Well, the way to do that is rather than an array, we do a Zim series. And so we can pass in a series as well to the tile. And now they'll go in order. Blue, green, orange, blue, green, orange, blue, green, orange, blue, green, orange. Isn't that amazing? We can also pass in the results of a function. So if you pass in a function that returns a value, you could pass that in there. We also have this, for instance, um, min colon uh, 50, max colon 100. So this is a Zim v value that is a range. So it's not picking it randomly outside and passing that in. It's passing in the dynamic parameter, which will then get picked by the tile. So we save this and we refresh here. And now we have a tile of a bunch of different random sizes. We could, it looks like it's top left aligned, so we could make sure that those get center aligned by going to a parameter of the tile, etc, etc. Right, so those are Zim V values. Uh, they're wonderful. Uh, they also help us with the emitter. And when we do the emitter, we could make a, a new circle. But if we pass in, for instance, if we pass in an array. Let me go individually on both sides of that. Put the array there. Um, we could do a, oops, ooh, circle. <laughs> new circle. We could say here a new uh, triangle. Have we seen a triangle yet? And inside there, we could... Well, that's a default black triangle. Okay, so what we're doing is we're emitting, and each time the emitter goes, it's going to randomly pick one of these with an E there. So are we ready? Pop, 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 pop. There's a default black triangle along with our circle. So you see what I mean? It's Isn't that handy? Because if we randomly picked one before a hand on the emitter, the emitter would then pick you know, would 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 uh, emit that one that we picked. But if we pass in dynamic parameters of the array, then the emitter will emit random things. There's other ways we can handle random things in the emitter too, and the emitter is so much fun. But we just got a little taste of how that worked. We saw a little taste of interactivity. Isn't that great? We saw a little um, taste of the Zim V values. Uh, another example of min and max might be, you know how you might 
uh, have a falling game where stuff is falling. And if, if we had set it in an interval, that means of every second or every half second, that means you did get this every second something would fall. Well, it, with a Zim interval, interval, you can pass in as the first parameter, which is the time, you can pass in a min of 0.5 seconds and a max of two seconds. Then each time the interval goes, it will pick from that and it will be an interval of slightly different intervals within that range. Isn't that cool? So the, that's the power of Zim V values. However, uh, I think we should end the tutorial there. It was great to be with you again. I'm Dr. Abstract. And if, uh, if you haven't seen the earlier tutorials, make sure you see those and check out some of the later tutorials when they come along. Uh, join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. You're welcome to ask any questions there. We'd be happy to help you. Bye-bye. Uh, Cheers.